expressions, right? So yesterday we talked about expressions with like terms, simplifying. Today we're going to get into solving equations. So when I do this solving equations, one of the things that you have to realize is for any time from here on out that you're going to solve equations, your number one goal is to solve to get the variable, whatever it happens to be, most of the time it'll be x, but it doesn't have to be, all alone and positive. So from here on out, that has to be true at the end. So again, it does not matter if I have a negative or positive answer, x is equal to 9, x is equal to negative 9. The answer doesn't matter, it just matters that my variable is positive. That's the most important thing. Okay. The next part of this that you have to remember when you're solving equations, especially early when you're kind of doing this again, I know you guys have, but kind of for the first time this year, is that uh, you perform the same operation so whatever you decide to do in the problem you have to do the same operation on both sides of the equal sign so if you decide we're going to look at I think um, adding today. So you have to think about doing that on both sides. Whatever you do to one side of the equation, you got to do to the other side. You'll hear me say that a lot in the coming weeks. Okay. Another thing that you have to make sure of is that, or building on this last thing that we said, doing the same operation, you can think about doing the inverse operation. So you're going to use inverse operations. What the heck's that mean? The opposite. The opposite. So give me an example of opposite operations. Uh, addition, subtraction. Example right. Perfect. So depending on what the problem says, if it says addition, I'm going to use subtraction. If it says subtraction, I'm going to use addition. Right? And what else? Go together. Multiplication and division. And then, anything else? Well, if you think about uh, the word PEMDAS, what else would we include in PEMDAS? Exponents. exponents, right? Exponents, what's the opposite of exponents? Anybody have any idea? Squared. Yeah. No way. Exponents and radicals. Opposite of each other. There you go. Good job. Don't do anything right. Don't get left right yet. Okay. So we probably won't get into a whole lot of these kind of problems again this year, but just so you start to recognize that those things will counteract each other. Okay. So now we're going to look at. We're going to solve today by addition or subtraction. So the first thing that you have to re realize, subtraction, spell it sometimes. So the first thing that you have to realize is what kind of problem do I have? All right, so we start out with x plus 4 equals 7. Now, a lot of these should be pretty simple to you again, hopefully. But what I would like to do in all of these kind of problems is I'm always going to cover up the variable. And then I'm going to ask myself, what's left over? Well, it says it's plus 4, right? So if it's plus 4, what's the opposite of addition? So I'm going to subtract 4. And again, whatever I do to one side, i got to do the other side. So again... Maybe uh, if this is difficult for you, you put a little line down the middle there. 
and now I just simplify. What happens if I have the same number but different signs? Same zero. They cancel out, right? So I'm left with x equals three. Positive three. And again, now, do I have my variable all by itself? Yes. And is it positive? Yes. Yes. Now, here's a, another thing that you can think about. Should you miss any of these problems? No, no. Why? Easy. <laughs> well, okay, yeah, they're easy. You can always check your work. So in your original problem, if I take my answer and put it back in there, is three plus four equal to seven? Yes. Yes. So I should never worry about missing any of these ones. Okay? But again, this is just the beginning, right? And we're going to keep on building. But let's look at a couple more. So it doesn't matter if our answer is the second part of the problem. Oh, I can't have two answers, though. But if I have y plus 20, okay? So it doesn't matter if y is on the right-hand side or the left-hand side. But again, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to cover up y. So how do I get rid of plus 20? I subtract 20. I subtract and then we have to go through and make sure of all of our rules, but again, we have the same number of different signs, so they cancel each other out. So we end up with y, and again, it's all by itself, and it's positive, so we're off to a good track. Now, what's 16 minus 20? Negative 4. Negative 4. So basically, we do keep change, change, right? And again, if you have to write that out and actually show yourself that you're doing keep change, change, do that. Take the time. And then, like Kenzie said, the last thing that we would do is put that back into the equation if we wanted to. Some of you aren't going to take the time to do that. But is negative 4 plus 20, 16? Yep. Yes. Yep. Why is it always going to be positive? No, no, no. no My variable has to be positive. How can I have a negative if that's a negative? Yeah. So I could end up with negative y equals negative 4. You can flip y. And then we have to get rid of that negative in front of y. But that's why we always want to say, here, it doesn't matter if the answer is positive or negative, we just want the variable to. Okay? Hey, so again, if you don't like how that one's written, remember, you can always rewrite the problem. You just got to make sure that you do it in the right order. Okay? So now, we can do the same exact kind of problems with subtraction. Right? y minus 7 is equal to negative 25. So again, I'm looking at the part with the variable, and I'm determining that this is a subtraction problem, so automatically I should think what? I should addition. think about doing addition. addition. Yeah. For that last one, could yes, you sir. subtract 16? Or is it trying to be nice? But then my variable and the number are on the same side. I'm always going to cover up the variable part and ask how do I get rid of that number that's with the variable part. So you could have done that, but then you would have to have done another step. So yes, but it would have just been longer. So again, I'm going to cover up y. How do I get rid of minus 7? Plus, Plus 7, right? And if I add 7 on one side, I add 7 on the other side. So here's some problems where if you would do this and... Kind of think back about keep change change. You would go back and you would add the opposite here. But there, when you do add the opposite or keep change change, you get a lot more uh, operators or signs in the problem. So it makes it a little bit more confusing. So that's why instead of thinking about keep change change and, and doing all that, um, just think about it as one giant minus sign, which also means a negative. So if I add 7 again to uh, negative 7, same number of different signs, they cancel out, so I'm left with my y. And what's negative 25 plus 7? Negative 18. And then last but not least, we, sh we can always go back. It's negative 18 minus 7, negative 25. Yeah, I think so. Okay. So again, nothing real complicated, um, but we can go backwards. Um, K minus 8. So again, it doesn't matter which side it's on. But again, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to cover up the K. So how do I get rid of negative 8? I'm adding it because again, we're talking about opposite things. So my 8's cancel out and I get still 19. Okay. Now, the other thing that they're going to ask you to do in this section after you solve the problem. 
Okay, so, sorry, does anybody have any questions with that? Mm -hmm. Just solving that. Cover up the variable and do the opposite of whatever the number is. Okay? They might ask you to graph this, to graph the solution. When they ask you to graph the solution, do not make this hard. Okay? When they ask you to graph, here you're, they're talking about a number line. So you make a number line. We always put zero down. So you're telling me where it is. And then you're just going to go through. So like for the last one, it was k is equal to 19. From zero, where is positive 19? So right, right. Somewhere over here, right? Now it's specifically that answer, right? So I'm going to put a dot and color it in. No, no, the arrows is when we get into inequalities. Yeah. Okay. So when they, so it's a specific answer. So it's one answer, and we just have to plot them. I don't think I make you do all of that on the homework. You just got to do a couple. Of them. Okay. But if they ask you to graph them, that's what you would do. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the last thing that we would do here is work with story problems. And I know a lot of you don't like story problems. You don't like to do word problems. So that's where you got to slow down a little bit. And let's see if we can do this. Oh, here goes my wheel again. I need to fix that. All right, so read the problem. Remember to move all of these problems. What? Oh, no, I'm moving. <laughs> <laughs> made 225 million, that is 38 million less than movie B. Write and solve an equation to find out how much money, how much movie B earned. Okay, so the first thing that we have to be careful of is the key word in here. When it says less than, remember what that meant. Subtraction. It does mean subtraction, but what do I subtract? You gotta flip something, right? So Movie A made 225, that is 38 million less than movie B. Write and solve an equation. What would you write? It would be 225 on one side and 38 million on the other side. Okay, so 225 equals, 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 equals okay. 8 million. X plus 38 million. So here's the question. That's what you gotta ask, right? So what are you gonna do? Okay. So you take, two, you take 225 plus 38 million and you find the total for movie B. Movie B made less than movie A though. They made more. No, movie A made more. No, no, yeah. that is 38 million less than movie B. Yeah, so 30, uh, so movie B yeah. made 38 million. If you want to find the total, you got to take 225 million plus 38 million. No, that's, that's, right. that's, that's what I thought. thought. And then you got to combine two and then you find out the total for movie B. Yeah. No. So, okay, first off. Which movie makes more money? Movie A. B. No. Oh, I see how you're doing it. 225 is 138. Yeah. No, 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 no. Okay, 38 million, though, isn't what movie B means. It says that is 38 million less than movie B. So you would add them. So who makes, who made more money? Movie B. Movie B made more money. Okay, so. Well then, so we make up a variable, right? X. What's a variable? We don't care. X. What does less than mean? Uh, subtract 38 million, right? Because yeah. B is 38 million less than, right? Yeah. Or this was 38 million less than whatever B made. So if I cover up X, what do I do with 38? Uh, and and this is where the Trevor's adding 38 million comes back. Okay, so we can cross out my 38s again. X is equal to how much? Uh, uh, 263. Yep. 263 what? Million. 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 So now, at the end, you got to decide. Does that make sense? Yeah. It does. Because first off, you got to know that B made more, right? You're still confused about the yeah. general. <laughs> okay. <laughs> No, no, just, just wait, just slow down. So it says movie A made this amount. Yeah. Okay, that is, so they're saying this is 38 million less than what movie B made. How much do you need to do that? 
That's what we're trying to find. So, right. So, would it be made thirty-eight million dollars more than so you just add B? But we don't know what B is. B is X. So, if you really wanted to do this, you could come back here and put capital B because that's what we're trying to find, right? We're looking for movie B. So we know that movie B has to be more than two hundred twenty-five million. So the only way we can do that is to add it to both sides. So you kind of got to go slow on some of them, or help the slow people out at least. We're not naming any names or anything, okay? So make sure you go really slow. You end up with a positive variable at the end, and that you always do the opposite operation, or the inverse operation, okay? Any questions? Do you want to see any more examples of this? So, what's going to be on the quiz? Uh, the last three sections. Yep. One through three, right? So, you got to make sure that you do one, or that's what you will review tomorrow on the worksheets. If you guys all get done, I will tell Mrs. Hunt you can work or correct the worksheets so you don't lose them. But this is, will, will be your assignment. Okay, any questions there?